Autolite and its 96,000 dealers present Suspense. Tonight, Autolite brings you A Ring for Maria, a suspense play starring Mr. Cornell Wilde. Oh, John, it's a beautiful ring. So you like it. A nice diamond, huh? John, I can't tell you how much. Oh, Maria, I would have done more for you and long ago, but for my business troubles, like like a stone around my neck hangs that. I know, John. The store. Yes, the store. That's why it's necessary to do this thing tonight, for both our sakes. Oh, John. It was crazy of me, I know, but I was worried the way things were between us that perhaps you didn't love me anymore. But no, I... After tonight, Maria, there will be... Other moments like this, many of them. When we get our money from the fire insurance company, we, we needn't rush back into business again. After all, we have been working hard for nearly ten years. We'll go someplace, enjoy ourselves first, together. Oh, I can hardly believe it. Only, only I wish that tonight was over with. When I think of what we must do. Oh, there's nothing to worry about, Maria. In the morning, you will be at your aunt's home in Minneapolis, and I... I will be here to handle everything myself. Don't you see? You'll be safe. And if I wasn't sure of everything, would I be willing to stay alone and face all the questioning? Oh, John. You're willing to do this for... For, for both of us, Maria. For our future. Now I can tell you how much this ring means to me. As long as I live, I will never take it off. Now I will go finish packing my bag. <laughs> kissed me before she went, and then I sat there on the couch and rubbed away at my mouth. She always smelled like laundry water, I thought. She was so big, older than I was. No, she had never appealed to me as the kind of woman I should have. If I hadn't been so frightened by America when I first arrived, I would never have married her at all. But Maria and the marriage settlement her father offered... He wanted her to have a nice boy from the old country, he said. Yes, Maria and the money seemed to go with this great new land. No more slaving for a living. I could start a business and this big blonde would work. But now our business at this store had gone to pieces, so burned the store. With the fire insurance money, I, I would have a chance for the kind of life I deserved. Oh, it was smart touch to give her the ring. With that blinding her eyes, she'd do whatever I wanted her to do. And afterwards, there'd be no trouble divorcing her. I had tested her in quarrels. She was the kind that takes her beatings silently. In just a moment, Mr. Cornell Wilde in the first act of A Ring for Maria. Ringing in the new year early, Harlow? Why, no, Hap. Those are only the three chimes. What three chimes? The three chimes a year an Autolite Stay Full battery needs water in normal car use. Harlow, you deserve life for that. <laughs> and I'll take it if it's the longer life of an Autolite Stay Full, because the Stay Full gives 70% longer life, as proven by tests conducted according to SAE minimum life cycle standards. You're positive, Harlow? Positive is the word, Hap. Every positive plate in the Autolite Stay Full battery is protected with fiberglass retaining mats to reduce flaking and shedding and keep the power-producing material in place. You sure got your battery problem solved for 1951, Harlow. Right, Hap. And friends, for the new year, see your neighborhood Autolite battery dealer and have him install an Autolite Stay Full battery. A battery that needs water only three times a year in normal car use. And remember, you're always right with Autolite. And now, with a ring for Maria and the performance of Mr. Cornell Wilde, Autolite hopes once again to keep you in suspense. Before I left the house, I told Maria to be sure and telephone her aunt in Minneapolis that she was coming. Then I stopped in at a bar and ordered a whiskey. When the bartender wasn't looking, I spilled this whiskey all over my shirt front. 
Next, I telephoned my friend, Frank Lasmo, and told him to stop in at my house at 11.15 on his way home from his restaurant. He would be my alibi. I was getting ready for the part of the plan I hadn't told Maria about yet. And I wasn't going to tell her. That part... That part she was supposed to guess. Doc? Oh, I'm so glad you're back. I tried not to think of it, but... John, you look... What's the matter? I, I can't do it. What? I... I can't go. I can't trust myself. I I even had some drinks to get up my nerve, but... No, I, I, I've been through too much all these months worrying. Oh, you have been drinking. I can smell it. You never drink. I told you. I, I had to do something. I tried to pretend that I was brave, that this thing tonight, because it meant so much to us, I, I would go through with it. But I can't. I... I can't. It takes a stronger person than I am. Oh, but, John, if you mean the fire burning the store, I'm glad we're not going... This is a terrible thing anyway. I'm glad. What are you glad about? The insurance is our only hope. Do you know what it means without it? We, we have nothing. It's the end of, of things of you and me. Of everything. I, I will have to go away alone. I couldn't go on with you knowing that I'm a failure as a man. John, it is not the end. Let them take the store. We'll begin fresh again. No, no. It, it was the only thing. Now we shall fail. I shall just go somewhere and disappear, and you... Yes? Yes, John? What about me? That's what I hate to think about. That I, that I must leave you. If only this thing tonight could be done. It's so simple. It's all arranged. We would have had happiness. John! John, let me do it. You were willing to stay behind and face everyone while I was safe at my aunt's. Why shouldn't I be willing to do as much now that this strain has proven too much for you? You stay here, John. I will go to the store. I will do it myself and then get on the train. It will be as we planned, only... Just, just don't talk like that anymore about leaving me. No. <laughs> I, I was just talking. I was just talking. <laughs> It was 11.15. Maria had been gone 20 minutes when I heard Frank's ring at the door. Good. I would keep him a half hour and by then the fire should have been discovered and someone would call me. Hello, Frank. Come in. Come in. Uh, good evening, John. It's so nice of you to let me come so late. Uh, does the letter mention my mother... How is she getting along? Yes, and your brother and his wife all are well. Ah. Come, sit down here. I have poured a glass of wine for each of us. Thank you, thank you. Uh, where is Maria? Asleep? No, she went out to visit friends. At least that's what she said. You think I should suspect her, perhaps? Oh, no, no, John. Everyone knows how Maria feels about you. Yes, of course. I about her. A good girl, Maria. But here, you want the letter. Here. Ah, here yeah. it is, Frank. Go ahead, read it. I'll pour some wine. John, a whole bottle of wine we put away. I'll never be able to sleep. And it's nearly midnight. Now, don't be foolish. It's wine, not that ink you sell for coffee. <laughs> You'll sleep. Well, I'm off. Uh, thanks for calling me you about the letter. Don't, don't go, Frank. I don't get to see you often. Uh, your phone, John. Uh, answer it. I will find my way out. Uh, well, uh, all right, Frank. It is nearly midnight, eh? Uh, seven minutes to. Uh, good night. Good night. Hello? Hello? Hello, is there someone on the line? What is that? Who? Who is it? What did you call for? Oh, John, I, I'm burned. What? what? What happened? I fell afterward in the dark, in the fire. I, I don't understand if you were burned. I, I beat at them. I beat at the flames on my dress and put them out. I got up the stairs and ran to the store. Did you remember to lock the door? I, I don't know. I was in pain, I tell you. I walked and cried. I, I didn't know what to do. And then I saw a little bar. I waited till he was almost where I am now, in the telephone booth. Oh, John, please come. Do something for me. 
But if, if you're in a bar, the people, the, can they see? No. No, I, I took my coat off when I went into the store before I went down to the basement. That's why the fire burned through my dress so quickly. Now I have my coat on. I can't tell. I can't tell. Maria, Maria, do you hear me? Yes, John. I'm coming. I'm coming with the car. Where is the place? A little bar. Clark Street. Near the railroad yard. Yes, yes, I know. Uh, leave the place and wait for me behind the freight loading platform where it is dark. I'll be there in 20 minutes. Don't talk to anyone. Don't let anyone see you too closely. Do you understand? Yes, John. Hurry. Hurry. Yes? Is this the home of John Markov? Yes. Are you John Markov? Yes. Do you operate a stationery store at 410 Wells Street? Yes, that, that's my place. Why? What, what happened? This is the police department. There's a fire there. You better get right down. Fire in my place? How, how how bad is it? How did it start? What's burning? Don't know any answers like that yet, Mr. Marco. I understand it's just striking out now, and they haven't been in the place yet to look around. But you better get down there and help check. Uh, shall I get word to them that you're coming? Well, yes, of course, right away. Uh, Mr. Marco. Yes? Uh, you've been home all night, Mr. Marco? Well, yes, why? You'd better hurry down. Yes, yes, I will. Yes, yes. But which would I go to first? To Maria, who sounded in such pain she might tell everything to the first person who found her? Or to the store, where the fire people and perhaps the police were waiting to talk to me? I wanted to go to the store, but I didn't dare. I didn't dare to leave Maria alone. It was nearly a, a half hour after midnight when I drove up to the alley where I told her to wait. Maria, Maria, here! Hurry! I can't, John. Get in, come on. John, a doctor. Right away. Right away, John. Maria, how badly are you burned? Are you sure it's... John, bad. Maria, listen to me. The police have called me by the store, and they are waiting for me there. Do you understand? The police? The police are waiting? But, but you will take me to a doctor first. You will... How can I, Maria? I told them I would be right down. I'd lost time driving to pick you up first. It will look suspicious. Very suspicious if I'm delayed. But, but I must. What will I do? Maria, I, I must leave you someplace in the car and go the rest of the way in a cab. I will get through with them as quickly as possible. And then I will be back for you. I can't. I can't wait any longer. You have to, Maria. Don't you understand what it means? You must. Promise that you will, that you will stay in the car quietly until I come. All right. All right. So, uh, you wouldn't know anything at all about how the fire got started, eh? No, I, I would not, sir. And, uh, you were home with this friend from 11.20 until nearly midnight? Uh, yes, that's right. I I was home with my friend Frank Laszlo. He owns that restaurant right on the corner there. He always closes up uh, by 11, and tonight he stopped in to uh, read a letter I received from friends of ours in the old country. All right. We'll talk to Mr. Laszlo. In the meantime, Mr. Markov, you better drop in at the fire marshal's office in the morning at 10 o'clock. You mean that I know... I don't mean anything. Well, certainly. I, anything I can do to help, I'll be there, of course. Of course. It had taken a half hour of the talking. I knew from their manner that they had found the kerosene or smelled it. Then I was back at the car looking at Maria. She appeared unconscious, but when I started to drive away... Gone so long. I couldn't help it, Maria. It wasn't pleasant, I, you know. No. No, Dr. John. So he can do something for me. All right, all right. John, how are you talking to me? You frighten me. Frighten you? What about me? Don't you think I am frightened? What do you suppose will happen if I take you to a doctor? He'll want to know everything and he will have to report it. But somewhere, John, I must have treatment. Where? Name the place where taking you won't be the same as going straight to the police. Well, then, the police. Anybody, anybody who will help me. John? 
John? I couldn't answer her. I was trapped now, I thought. All I have to do is bring her in for help anywhere. No doctor, no hospital would treat her without reporting the case to police. And to take her home. If the police caught me bringing Maria there, if they found that she was burned and I was helping her... For hours, it seemed I drove that night wandering, thinking, trying frantically to find some solution. While Maria stared straight ahead, not speaking. Sometimes she would cry. Then it was quiet again. She slept. I wanted to get away from other cars, from people. So I turned onto an old dirt road that led along the river. When I got to a dark spot, I stopped. John? Yes, I'm here, Maria. Oh, are we at the hospital? No. And there is no doctor? No, there is no doctor. There's no hospital. And there is not going to be any. You got yourself into this, and you got me into it. When you are found burned, it's prison for both of us. John. John, I said prison. Separate prisons, thank goodness. Anything to get away from you. Now do you understand? Now let me hear you say John again. Once more before I go. Yes. Once more. But let me touch you. Let me just touch you. What are you doing? John! Get back. Take your hands away from my face. John! John! Somehow, I got out of the car and away from her. It must have been with her last strength that she attacked me because she, she fell back. But then when I stopped to look back, she was out of the car, standing unsteadily on the ground. I called, but she didn't hear. She turned, and I saw that she was trying to reach the river edge. She was weak, sagging under her weight. But she kept on and made it almost. At the very edge of the river, she slumped to the ground in a kneeling position. I started for her, but inside of me I felt only jelly. Then as I stood there, I saw she was doing something with her hands, as if wringing them. Then I realized she was taking off the ring, the diamond ring she had said she would keep on as long as she lived. It must have slipped from her hand because she started pawing around in the dirt. Then she got it turned and threw it at the car with all her strength. With the effort threw her off balance, and she slowly fell backward, like an old doll, into the water. She was gone. God. Now I was out of it. They wouldn't be able to touch me. Free. Autolite is bringing you Mr. Cornell Wilde with Irene Tedro in A Ring for Maria, tonight's production in radio's outstanding theater of thrills, Suspense. Say, Harlow, what are your plans for the start of a new year? Same as usual, Hap. I always get the start of the year with an Autolite Stay Full battery. The battery that needs water only three times a year in normal car use. But aren't you going to welcome the year in? Why, sure, Hap. Year in and year out, there's nothing more welcome than the dependable starting power and extra convenience of the Autolite Stay Full battery. You be the life of the party, Harlow. Hap, my good man, you can't beat the Autolite Stay Full for longer life. Seventy percent longer life, in fact, as proven by tests conducted according to SAE minimum life cycle standard. Aren't you going to raise your champagne glass, Harlow? You mean fiberglass, Hap, because every positive plate of an Autolite Stay Full battery is protected with a fiberglass retaining mat to reduce flaking and shedding and keep the power-producing materials in place. But, Harlow, everybody's going to... To start the new year by having their neighborhood Autolite battery dealer install an Autolite Stay Full, the battery that needs water only three times a year in normal car use. 
And remember, you're always right with Autolite. And now Autolite brings back to our Hollywood soundstage Mr. Cornell Wilde in Elliot Lewis's production of A Ring for Maria, a tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. Early in the morning, I went to a police station. I had decided it would look odd when Maria's body was found if I had not reported her absence. They took her description and then... How about jewelry? Did she have any she might be wearing? Uh, only her wedding ring and earrings. Uh, gold earrings shaped like a hoop. Nothing else? Uh, nothing. All right, Mr. Markov. We'll call you the moment we hear anything. But I think she'll be walking in on you soon. That's our experience in these cases. I breathed easier when I left the station. <laughs> I had almost told him of the diamond ring. I didn't want to because I had failed to find it when I made a hurried search before leaving the river's edge. But I knew the spot, and when things quieted down, I planned to go there in daylight and search again. It was worth too much to let go. Just now, the only thing ahead of me was the visit to the fire marshal's office at 10 o'clock. But I wasn't worried about that. Let them ask their questions. I had an alibi. I was home when the fire started. And the only person who could implicate me in any way was dead. Yes, I had to admit, things had turned out not bad. Not bad. Oh, yes, sir? Oh, my name is John Markov. I'm to see the fire marshal this morning. Oh, yes, Mr. Markov. Just a moment. Mr. Markov is here, Marshal. Very well. The marshal is coming out, Mr. Markov. Oh, good morning, Mr. Markov. Had a lot to think about. Yes, I've heard. The fire, and then this morning early you reported your wife missing, didn't you? Yes, I was going to tell you about it, too. I was already informed, and I'm afraid I have what may be bad news for you, Mr. Markov. The police think they've found her. Found her? How? Where? Very unusual. You reported her as alive only last night, yet this morning, a half hour ago, her body was found floating in the river. The description tallies exactly. Floating? You mean, you mean she was drowned, Maria? I don't mean anything of the kind. Come along, Mr. Markov. Police are waiting for you to make positive identification at the morgue. I didn't like the way the marshal talked or acted with me. It made me feel as if something had gone wrong. But I told myself to stop worrying. They could know nothing, especially if Maria was dead. But what did he mean talking as if she wasn't drowned? I was still thinking about this when we got to the undertakers. Two men were standing outside. They nodded at the marshal, and something told me they must be detectives. Then one of them spoke to me. You're Mr. Markov? Uh, yes. I'm Sergeant Holbrook with the Homicide Bureau of the Police Department, Mr. Markov. We'd like to take a look through your car. Is it here? Why, sure. Go ahead. And uh, Let me have your keys. Do you mind? Yes. We might have to move the car, one reason or another. Uh, yes. All, all right. Come along yes. this way, Mr. Markov, for the identification. Well, Mr. Markov? It's... it's her. It's Maria. But how... what happened? What happened was a tragedy, Mr. Markov. But do uh, you see those marks on her body? Yes, yes. Those marks are burns. And there was a fire in your store last night. But I don't understand you. You, you think Maria... Marshal, can I talk to you for a moment? Oh, yes, Sergeant. Look over here. Mr. Markov, did you know your wife telephoned her aunt in Minneapolis last night and told her she was arriving for a visit there this morning? Did you or didn't you know that, Mr. Markov? You're awfully slow answering very simple questions. No, 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 I, I did not know it. I see. Well, anyway, she did, Mr. Markov. You might like to know how we found out, would you? Why, yes. You see, when your wife wasn't on the morning train at 7 o'clock, her aunt got worried and telephoned your house but got no answer. I was at the police station reporting Mario's absence. That's right. At 9.30, your wife's aunt telephoned again, but this time to your place of business. Naturally, she was told the line was out of order. 
Now she really was worried, and that's how we found out about it. She telephoned the police. I talked to her. Did you tell her about Maria? No, Mr. Markov. I knew a body had been found that answered the description of Mrs. Markov, but I wasn't sure yet. I'm only sure now. But Mrs. Markov's aunt told me something else. It seemed that your wife was very happy about a gift you gave her last night. And naturally, as women will, she had to talk about it. She told her aunt. You remember the gift? Oh, yes. Yes, of course. It slipped my mind in all this that has happened. The ring, you mean. The diamond ring, you mean. That's right, Mr. Markov. She was wearing that ring, wasn't she, when you last saw her? Uh, Yes, yes, I forgot. She must have been wearing that. That's right. And she left the house before the fire, naturally. About 11, you reported. And you never saw her after that until this morning here? No, I, I did not. You're sure? You're very sure of that? Yes, yes, I'm sure. Then how is it, Mr. Markov, that when we looked at your car just now, we saw something that had been caught in the rain scupper that runs along the side of the body over the windows? And this, Mr. Markov, is what we found stuck in there along with some loose, fine gravel. This diamond ring. What of it? The coroner's physician found no water in your wife's lungs. She didn't drown. In his opinion, she died from heart failure, directly superinduced by her pain and burns. How did this terribly injured woman get to the river, miles from the scene of the fire? The diamond ring tells us the answer. She was taken there and thrown in. Thrown in by you, who watched her die, even though you might have perhaps saved her life by getting medical aid for her. But I didn't throw her in. She fell in, I tell you. She fell in. It was an accident. No, Mr. Markov. We don't talk the same language. In mine, the death of your wife was murder. Suspense, presented by Autolite. Tonight's star, Mr. Cornell Wilde. Well, see you next year, Harlow. Okay, Hap, and in the meantime, don't forget... Uh, Don't forget what? That Autolite makes over 400 products for cars, trucks, planes, and boats in 28 plants coast to coast. These include complete electrical systems used as original factory equipment on many leading makes of America's finest cars. Electric windshield wipers, starting motors, voltage regulators, coils, distributors, wire and cable, generators. So, friends, don't accept electrical parts supposed to be as good. Ask for and insist on original factory parts at your neighborhood service station, car dealer, garage, or repair shop. And because all Autolite parts are original factory parts, you can be sure you're right. Because you're always right. With Autolite. Next week on Suspense, Mr. Mickey Rooney, a star of Alibi Me. And in weeks to come, you will hear such famous stars as Ginger Rogers, Eve Arden, and Ezio Pinza, all appearing in tales well calculated to keep you in... Suspense. Suspense is produced and directed by Elliot Lewis, with music composed by Lucian Morawieck and conducted by Lud Gluskin. A Ring for Maria was written for Suspense by Lewis Pollock. Cornell Wilde is next to be seen in the new RKO Technicolor production, Sons of the Musketeers. And remember, next week on Suspense, Mr. Mickey Rooney in Alibi Me. This is Harlow Wilcox again to wish each and every one of you on behalf of Suspense and 96,000 Autolite dealers from coast to coast a happy and prosperous new year. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.